What's up everybody? Hopefully you guys are doing good as always. Today we have a very interesting game from the 9th London Classic uh, from 2017 between Vichy Anand and Wesley So. Vichy has the white pieces. We see e4, e5, knight to f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. And here there's a, a lot of options. You can go knight c3, just developing and controlling the center. You could go very aggressive with maybe c3 going for d4 and controlling the center this way. Or you could simply castle, which is the more civilized and safe approach. In fact, this is actually what happened in the game. Now we have knight to f6, we have d3 and, and also black castles, and now a4. Here's the first move that maybe you want to incorporate into your own game. Um, sometime playing a4 uh, is very reasonable and it's very important because a lot of times you might have noticed in grandmaster level games, we do see something like a4. And the point is, you want to grab space in your opponent's territory. Um, especially here when both players castle the king side, it's important not to forget about the queen side, and that's why a4 is a very powerful move. Um, now, why do you want to grab space in the first place? Well, if you have a lot of space, then your pieces can develop very, very nicely. So for example, uh, if we see h6, then let's say this move, uh, let's say just random moves for both players, all of a sudden, all of these pieces have very nice squares, um, or at least there's more squares that they can develop to. You have more squares uh, to put your pieces on, and in general, it's a lot easier to find good squares for your pieces. Whereas if, if black is playing here, there's less space for black, and all of a sudden, you know, the bishop has to drop back, um, and the bishop has to move back somewhere, and this could cause even less space for black. So it's important to grab space because it makes your uh, possibilities to develop easier and your opponents harder. Um, and another thing about this topic is that when you're grabbing space, and this is very important, you do not want to just aimlessly push a pawn forward. You need to grab space with all of your pawns because if you just push a pawn here, then all of a sudden, uh, let's say a6, notice that now this pawn here is weak forever. And so, for example, bishop b4, and all of a sudden it's a target, and you're most likely going to lose it at some point in the game. And so it's important that when you're grabbing space, you do it right. So after this move, we see c3 going for b4, and again, grabbing space this way. Uh, here we have a5, stopping b4, very important. If your opponent is trying to grab space, you need to be, you know, to, to be aware of this and then stop it. And now knight to d2, we have d6, and now h3, the bishop coming to e6. Here's another kind of point in the game that I want to, uh, you know, put your attention on. Here, this is very important. When there's a possibility to trade, you want to make sure that you're trading on your terms and on your uh, conditions. Here, if white takes, um, then after this move, notice that this bishop is still kind of blocked in. There isn't you know, a lot of opportunities to get this bishop out, and you're going to have to waste more moves moving the knight out to get it out. Whereas here, if you start by moving your rook over, once black takes on your conditions, then you can develop and capture back all in one move, and all of a sudden your bishop is already free. So it's important that when you're, you know, talking about trading pieces, that you do it on your conditions to, in the end, give you the best outcome. Uh, here we have bishop e3, we have a trade of bishops, queen d7 and queen b3 going for this pawn here, but understand that this pawn is completely defended. Um, obviously right now, for example, it's king to h8, and this is kind of a move that I do if, if I just want to show you the position in white's perspective at a, at a moment. Of course, this is most likely not going to happen, but the point is now after queen takes b7, uh, the queen's trapped. You're going to lose your queen, so, so you can't actually take the pawn immediately, but in the future, this is something that you could have a target on, and in general, you know, it's a good position for the queen, of course, also maybe eyeing down the king. Uh, here we have knight going to e7. Again, you're not, you know, blundering a pawn because even though the queen can now go down here, it's all defended by the knight and the queen also right here. Um, here, so instead, obviously, we have knight to c4 going back to the nice square that it used to be on where it's kind of in the center of the board, just putting pressure on all of the pieces in the center. So this is a good square for the knight. And now we have knight to g6, uh, centralizing the rooks with rook a to d1, and now b6. Um, like I mentioned, this pawn, it wasn't a target, you know, you couldn't immediately take it, but in the future, it could have been something that, that, that white could have tried to take, and so it's important here that black is just covering their, their position as well as they can, and stopping this queen from having any purpose along this b file, which is why the queen reroutes to c2, and maybe tries to maybe move over to the king side, and try to, to be a bit more useful over there, so it's important that once your piece has absolutely no more purpose where it, where it used to be, you try to look to, to opportunities to move it over and give it some you know a new purpose. Uh, here we have d4 
or sorry, D5 trying to kick the, the knight away, but instead white just gives away their E4 uh, pawn. Now we have rook to D8, and now D4. We see a trade of rooks, um, and actually another trade of rooks. So we're already in the end game. Typically, end games are without queens, but I think this also can can count as the end game. Uh, we have queen to D3, but instead of trading, Wesley so goes for E7. So here is is a big moment. A lot of players would very easily and gladly trade the the pieces, but now notice this is a complete draw. There's the identical pawn structures on both sides of the boards. Both players have two knights. It's a complete draw here. There's no real chances uh, for either players, so you might as well already uh, agree on a draw in this position. Um, but instead, Wesley so tries to be a bit more aggressive and maybe gives himself uh, a couple of chances. Of course, right now it's still obviously uh, maybe black slightly better, but for the most part, it's it's kind of a draw here. But it is still holding off on actually making that queen trade and looking for opportunities to attack, which ended up working well for Wesley. Uh, we have knight to c2, knight to f4, the queen has to move back, and now knight to d5. Notice that now there's a very important move that, that white plays, which is king to f1, okay? So knight to d5 is actually putting a threat on this pawn, because if white does absolutely nothing, then after this pawn, notice that now there's this beautiful fork. So the, the king moving to f1 is, is you know, the purpose of this move is trying to limit any, I, any possible forks that these knights can do, and in general, limit the tactical opportunities for the opponent. But the problem is, the, the king moving here actually gives another tactical opportunity, which is after knight takes and queen takes, there's queen now to e2 that comes with check. The king moves, and now queen to d1. And after king h2, knight to e2 looking for checkmate, actually, uh, and also attacking the queen. So if the queen moves to, like, b2, you have checkmate. So the queen really has to move to e1. This seems like the only reasonable move, but then you win the knight. So, uh, and obviously, this is completely winning for you. You're, you're up a pawn, and you have, you know, even more possibilities to attack. Um, so the point really here is that the king moving to f1, although it does stop one tactical idea with the knight taking, it does allow for the other tactic. But black actually, or sorry, white actually has a beautiful response here. So in the game, we have knight to e3, just trying to stop the queen from coming here and now actually trying to take the knight. But in the actual uh, game, there's actually a beautiful tactic here. I encourage you to stop the video, try to find it. This is a way for Vichy Anand to no longer be down a pawn, but actually win back the pawn. So try to take a moment. It's incredibly hard to find, but it's a beautiful tactic. Um, and, and so pause, or on pause rather, when you're ready. At this point, I will go ahead and reveal it. It's knight takes b6. Incredible move. Incredible move. The point is, after the pawn takes b6, queen takes c3, and no longer does this queen to e2 idea work anymore, because after king g1, queen to d1, king to h2, and knight to e2, threatening checkmate, the queen doesn't have to go and sacrifice the knight here uh, by going to, to queen to e1. Instead, the queen can actually go all the way to the other side, because now there's chances for white to counterattack, in fact, forcing a draw here. Um, as you see, there's nothing really that, that black can do here. If ever g6, then there's this draw here. So beautiful, beautiful possibility that white had here, sacrificing the knight in order um, to, to end up winning this knight. And here it's a complete draw again. You're, you're, again, same pawn structures, both sides of the board, and equal material. So it's a great idea. Um, and so how did the game continue, though? Uh, of course, Vichy did not find this. We see knight to e3, and from here it continues to go downhill um, for, for, uh, for white, unfortunately. We have queen to c3. The knight moves h. Uh, so this is actually a beautiful move. h5, the point is you want to take away the defender of f2. So once the knight moves, notice that now queen to b2 comes with a double attack, actually an attack for checkmate and an attack on this pawn. Um, the only reasonable way to save both is queen to c2, but this also loses a pawn because of this fork. So the point is you're going to lose another pawn here as white, which is why in this position, Vishyanand actually resigned. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.